So last week we recorded our show kind of in the middle of the snowstorm mm -hmm. before the full impact could be felt and seen, but it was crazy. Right. We got like a foot of snow. It was insane. So much snow that um, they had to shut down school. Mm -hmm. It toppled carports. For a couple days. It crushed, literally crushed a couple carports. <laughs> yeah. Even Grand Targhee, which is a ski resort. Which needs the snow, is built for snow. <laughs> yeah, a place that is specifically built to handle snow. <laughs> was like, hey, there's too much snow. <laughs> had to shut down a couple Saturdays ago. Right. Wow, it was crazy. And 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 I uh, back to two episodes ago. I need to chalk one up for Mikey because I'm like, I don't think we're quite done yet. <laughs> and I feel so dumb. I really thought I was oh. I was way too up. I was this wide eyed, optimistic little girl who was like, Oh, it's finally spring. I can wear my pretty dresses again. And then this happened. <laughs> but uh, but first of all, Idaho. And second of yes. all, yeah, I don't blame you because we did have like three or four weeks of 40 degree days. Right. Consistently. I was like, this is great. <clears throat> exactly. And the groundhog didn't, didn't see a shadow. Like, all of the cards were stacked in my favor, and Mike still won. It was <laughs> <laughs> bunch of crap. <laughs> it was st it was still very much a El Nino winter until it wasn't. <laughs> right, right. Like, okay, my power went out for twenty five hours. It sure did. <laughs> that wasn't fun. That well, wasn't very cash money. It wasn't fun at your house, but you did come hang out with me instead, and that was pretty fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to hang out at your house, and we got so bored. <laughs> Which is typically something that doesn't happen, but you know. Right. Well, and it was less that and more that we were um, open to exploring more than we usually are. <laughs> and we happened to come across on my on my Broadway HD subscription a little something called the Toxic Avenger musical. <laughs> so we start watching it and halfway through I'm like, this is nothing like the movie. <laughs> and Carly said, there's a movie? Well, here's the thing. I knew there was a movie. But, like, I hadn't seen it, and I was like, how is it not like the movie? Because every other time I've seen a musical based on a movie, it's actually been more or less pretty accurate, just with more fun. It is a terrible, disgusting film, conceptually, mm -hmm. and also the acting is horrible. And there's a couple of parts in that movie, even though it's from 1984, there's a couple parts from that movie that I'm not even going to tell you about on this podcast, and right. you know how rowdy we get. Okay, and also, I'm kind of mad that you lumped it into the same category as Hasbin, because Hasbin at least has artistic value. You know, it's got good <laughs> yeah. storytelling, the songs are great, it, it's well done. Now this. <laughs> how how this movie. So poorly done, and also just gross and weird, you know. How it spawned three or four sequels. Right. And then a couple years later, a kid's cartoon. And apparently now, a musical. <laughs> Right. Yeah, which also, the acting, everything was so overacted. It's Yeah, it's terrible in every way, shape, and form. The, 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 they're all over actors. Yeah. I've seen less overacting in a, middle school <laughs> in a middle school production of anything. Yeah. You know? So here we are spending a lot of time to tell you it's horrible, don't watch it. And that's the thing. You told me all of that before we watched it. Unless. And I was still impressed by how fucking terrible it was. You're into that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it would be the perfect MST3K style make yes. watch it to make fun of it experience. Yeah. Kind of like love, <laughs> love never dies. If yeah. you're not an impressionable child, this is for <laughs> yes. adults only. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like the sequel to Phantom of the Opera that I just found out about <laughs> in the last year. Thanks to you. Right. And your and Broadway <laughs> HD. <laughs> anyway, point is. If you're going to watch it, watch the musical, not the movie. The movie sucks. And also, why didn't he just take off the damn tutu? The entire movie, he's Spoilers, wearing it. Spoilers, Carly. We've talked about this. It's 40 years old. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but genuinely, the entire movie, he's wearing this tutu that he could have changed out of. I wish, honestly, I wish I had never seen that movie. There are some things you can't unsee. Right. I'm glad I saw it because I think it's sort of funny to look at, but like... The main character, even before he becomes a superhero, is just so irredeemable that once he does become a superhero, you like you can't root for him. Yeah, yeah, you weren't rooting for him in the first place, right? Like there, like he was such an underdog <laughs> that he was no longer an underdog. He was just weird and gross. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how I was in high school. Yeah, 
Oh, you think you were? <laughs> we've seen my picture. If not, Michael, throw it up on the IFAF uh, Facebook or something. We, we've promised to do that, and we still haven't. Yeah, you know, Anything. we should. So a day without power was lots of fun. <laughs> and then not only a power outage, but then a meta outage the following Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, just a few days a few days later. Yeah, you know, I wake up in the morning. I think checking Facebook and Insta is w- not the first thing I do, but it's it's in my list, my top 10 list of when I wake up. Oh, yeah, for sure. See what's going on. Yeah. And there, and it's it was sort of acting like I had been locked out of my account, like hacked. Right, right. In fact, a group of forty state attorneys general have sent a letter to Instagram and Facebook parent company Meta, expressing deep concern over what they say is dramatic a dramatic uptick of consumer complaints about account takeovers and lockouts. Whoa, really? And I've, I've actually known a couple of people that have been locked out of their Facebook. Oh, well, that makes me kind of wonder if I need to scrub my Facebook a little more. Although most of it is just like cringy stuff that I posted <laughs> in high school. So thank goodness. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Your username was cool dude for 2069. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it was kind of funny because that same morning I woke up and I had. So I woke up and I tried to tech- I tried to check my Facebook and I couldn't load it. And I was like, whatever, I don't care. I was already running late like I usually am. And uh, just, you know, went on to my next thing instead. And then I get a text from you, which is really uncommon because usually you contact me through the Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And you were like, hey, is your Facebook out too? And that's that's when I was like, oh, phew, it's not just me. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I had to call a, a couple of people and ask mm-hmm. because I got stuck in this endless loop like, oh, enter your username. Okay. Enter your password. Great. Enter your username. Right. <laughs> and back and forth. And like, so when it finally did come back online, mm-hmm. I've got Facebook on three devices. I don't know about you. Uh, phone, iPad, and desktop. I was able to use my iPad that was still logged in Mm -hmm. because obviously my desktop and phone, I had already blown that. Right, right. But now your devices that you are logged into can talk to your other devices that you're logged out of and can log you in. Okay. Because like I'd heard that they can like log you out of them. You but I didn't know that you could log into them from it, other devices. It's the first time I've seen it. Maybe everybody else knows this and I'm just Wild. stupid. Huh. But that was handy. Uh-huh. But then I, you know, I but I saw somebody else who was going through the same thing post later. Like they had a like a page long of this is me, this is me, this is me. We've noticed somebody's tried to log you in on this device. Is that you? And you keep answering this is <laughs> me. It, it was just it was bizarre, it was frustrating, and it made me realize that I might rely too heavily on meta products. Maybe. Like, hey, Zuck, maybe you should spend a little less time building that bunker of yours in Kauai. Did you hear about this? He, he bought up a bunch of properties with shell companies. Right. So no one would know it was him. Kind of like Walt Disney had to do when he was purchasing mm-hmm. property in Orlando for Disney World. Right, right. Like, because if they had found out it was him, they would have jacked up their prices, right? Of course, yeah. Anyway, maybe you should spend less time on your bunker and more time on, um, you know, your product. Yeah. That has made you billions. Which also, I think it's so hilarious that, you know, millionaires and billionaires are building bunkers. Because it's like, okay, honey, let's say that you do survive whatever apocalypse you think is coming. How are you going to live? Because, <laughs> like, sure, you can run Facebook, but, like... Can you farm? You've been living Can off you the make backs food? of everybody else for your entire life. I'm just saying, like, all of the rich people building bunkers are just so delusional because even if they do survive it, they don't have any poor people left to work for them. So, <laughs> sorry, well, you're going to starve anyway, dude. I'm sure they probably have a pretty well-stocked fallout shelter or whatever. You're right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll starve in luxury once they go through all of that. Right. Yeah. They'll have a good year, too. Five. Well, shit just got even. dark. But, you know, <laughs> well, you know, when the rich have nothing to eat, they have nothing to eat. But when the poor have nothing to eat, they'll eat the rich. So. Oh, that's right. That's where that expression comes from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Something like that. Oh, but the good news is after almost snowpocalypse 2024, <laughs> it says, we because we've had a less than average snowpack. Uh-huh. Snowpack is important to farmers. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the good news is we're now... We've exceeded 100% oh, good. of our average predicted snowpack for the year. Nice. Okay. So the farmers are going to be okay this year. Mm. I always, I, growing up here, I always heard on a rainy day, 
from somebody who obviously didn't like the rain, they would say, well, the farmers need it. Mm-hmm. Now, I could live in Seattle. Me too. I could live in Forks, Washington. Oh, yeah. I'm basically a vampire anyway. Like, my, my <laughs> skin is the same color as this wig. <laughs> yeah, you like the rain, right? I do. I do. Yeah. The only problem is that my dog doesn't. So, mm-hmm. like, I'll try to take him out and he'll, like, act like he's going to pee and then he won't. And then he'll walk inside and then he'll pee because he's like, well, I didn't want to get my paws wet. <laughs> he's a little princess, isn't he? He is. Maybe he's you should get brat. him a tutu. Yeah, you know what? I think he deserves one. 